Man Eater. Written and read by John Katash. Six months ago, Moira, who had lived next door since I moved in five years ago, passed away. I miss her, but she was elderly and had been in failing health for a while. Her daughter Belinda put the house on the market a few weeks later, and it sold within days, despite being desperately in need of refurbishment. I'm sure that Moira hadn't done anything since her husband died 20 years ago, and every time I popped in, I couldn't get the musty smell out of my nostrils for hours. I asked Belinda who the buyer was, and she told me it was a recently divorced guy in his late 30s. She didn't say much more, she was always a bit snooty, and I got the impression that all she wanted was to get her well-manicured nails into the net proceeds. She had already quit her job in the co-op, and she and portly, boring husband Clive were jetting away on a string of exotic holidays. That's one inheritance that won't last long. The new man moved in a couple of months ago, and as soon as the removals van left, I nipped around to introduce myself. After tidying my hair, I levered myself into my tightest jeans and applied my new scarlet lippy, while a girl has to make a memorable first impression. I knocked and heard him whistling down the hallway. As he opened the door, I flashed my sexiest smile. Hi, I just wanted to say hello and see if you want anything. I'm Fliss and I live in the bungalow next door. Hi, I'm Mark. Nice to meet you, Fliss. It's all fine at the moment, but if I need anything, I know where you are. Thanks, love. I winked at him. Great. I'll see you around, Mark. Welcome to the neighbourhood, you love it here. He nodded, gave me a thumbs up and closed the door. Wow, Belinda certainly didn't do him justice. He is gorgeous. Tall, dark, muscular and very handsome. Even if he is a man of few words. Life was looking up in Orchard Row. Mark was definitely a creature of habit. Every Sunday at 10 o'clock he washed his car. So I made sure I was outside five minutes before cleaning my battered Fiat Uno. It was perfect shorts and t-shirt weather, so as soon as he appeared, I opened the bonnet and bent over to check the oil level, providing him with a perfect view of my derriere and tanned legs. Pretending not to notice him till I'd finished, I slammed the bonnet shut. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there, Mark. Great minds think alike, I see. What a lovely day. Yes, gorgeous. That was it. Mark was either a bit shy or the strong silent type or both. I needed a chat and coffee with my best friend Isha. Unfortunately, she was no help. Perhaps he's gay, Fliss. Or maybe he's in a relationship already, or he doesn't fancy you. Thanks, Isha. That's so helpful. He doesn't come across as gay, and I haven't seen any other women round there, so perhaps I'm just out of practice. It has been a while since I split up with Matt. Hmm. You need a guy badly, Fliss. Why not try one of those internet dating sites again? That's a total waste of time. They all lie about their backgrounds, particularly their age and marital status, and they're all after one thing. You're not? Not completely. What I need is a decent man, and preferably one who lives next door. Sounds as if you've got it bad. Should I come round and check him out? No chance, Isha. If he's as shy, the one thing he won't want is you ogling him and drooling like a baby. I left it at that. It's okay for Isha. She's been happily married to handsome Krish for years. She doesn't know what it's like to lie in bed on a January night with no one but Gregory Bear to cuddle or to sit on the sofa watching your favourite programmes alone, especially when my gorgeous neighbour may well be doing something similar. Last month, Mark started work on the house. There was a lot of banging and bashing, and from the items left on the drive, I established that he had fitted a bathroom and was in the process of doing the same with the kitchen. He was clearly a useful chap to have around. Another box ticked. Then quite out of the blue, things seemed to look up. I was defrosting the freezer one evening after getting away from the office early when I heard a knock at the door. Clad in my oldest dungarees and a white blouse, I wasn't exactly looking my best, but there was nothing I could do about that. Anyway, it was Mark. Hi, Fliss. I'm changing the sink and taps and it's taking a lot longer than I thought. I've had to turn off the water and silly sold, so I forgot to fill up the kettle. Don't suppose you can fill it for me. I'm gagging for a cuppa. He passed it to me. No problem at all, Mark. This was my chance. Just a thought. Why don't you have a break for ten minutes and I'll make you a cuppa here. Sit down in the lounge and put your feet up. He agreed to come in, albeit a little reluctantly. 
So I led him inside and nipped upstairs to slap on a bit of makeup and unbutton a couple of blouse buttons whilst the kettle boiled. Then I made tea and cut a few doorstep size slices from the cherry cake I'd cooked the previous day. If that didn't win over his stomach, nothing would. At least I had the chance to find out more about Mr. Silent. I relaxed onto the opposite side of the settee and put my feet on the buffet. So how are you enjoying it here, Mark? Settled in okay? Yeah, great. Did you used to live locally? Yeah, in the next village. This was like pulling teeth. So why did you move? Um, one messy divorce. Oh, sorry to hear that. Do you have children, Mark? No, my ex wasn't keen to start a family. I leaned forward and picked up the cake plate, exposing more cleavage. That makes things a lot easier for you. The less luggage, the better. Would you like some more cherry cake? No, I'd better get back to it. I've got loads to do this evening, but thanks anyway. As he left, I gave him my winning smile, quickly running my tongue along my top lip and pushing up my chest. If you want anything else, let me know anytime. Um, thanks, Fliss. Very kind of you. I had to admit that I hadn't achieved much, and he didn't even compliment me on, me on the cake. This was going to be a lot tougher than expected, but I still had the feeling that the ultimate prize would be worth it. Time to up the ante. Fortunately, the June heat wave came to my aid, and I was able to try out my new minimalist bikini in the back garden. Mark was low on the lawn as I strutted out and settled onto the lounger with my magazine and cocktail. I sat up and rubbed suntan lotion over my legs. Then I waited till he was emptying the grass box and leant over the fence. Hi, Mark. Lovely day. Nice to see you keeping busy. He gave me the once over, although tarty Helen, who was staring over the fence from her house on the opposite side of Mark, shot me a look that would have killed Vestal Virgins. Oh, hi, Fliss. Yeah, beautiful. You're looking very um, tanned. Things were slowly improving. Thanks. You're looking pretty good yourself. I'm sure he blushed, but then he turned away. Right, back to work. This lawn won't mow itself. Last week, I finally thought I'd made a breakthrough. The kitchen tap had been dripping for a few weeks and seemed a bit loose. I delayed calling the plumber as it didn't seem to be getting worse, but then disaster struck. As I went to turn it on, it seemed tight, and when I pulled hard, it made a horrible grinding sound, and suddenly water was shooting everywhere. I was dressed in my red T-shirt and matching shorts, and within seconds, I was soaked through. In my panic, I couldn't for the life of me remember where the stopcock was. I screamed, and then I thought of Mark. He'd know what to do. I ran outside and hammered on his door. He answered, took one look at me, and burst out laughing. What's happened to you, Fliss? Quick! Can you help, please? There's water shooting everywhere. What do I do? To be fair to him, he didn't hesitate. He was in my kitchen, faster than a ferret up a trouser leg. And within seconds, he'd located the stopcock and turned off the water. He helped me dry up the mess. I noticed that he was definitely giving me the eye. I looked like an over-enthusiastic entrant in a wet t-shirt competition. But though I was dripping, I managed to hang around for a few minutes to give him a good eyeful. Then I made my excuses and popped quickly upstairs for a change of clothes. When I got back downstairs, I sidled up to him. I suppose I'd better phone a plumber. No, it's okay. I'll pop down to the plumber's merchants now. I shouldn't be too long. And off he went, which gave me enough time to dry my hair, do my makeup, and improve on my hastily selected choice of clothes before he returned, clutching a plastic bag. Within half an hour, he'd fixed it, another tick in his box. I offered him a coffee without success, and then he stoutly refused to take any money off me. There was only one option. I offered to cook him dinner on Saturday evening, and amazingly, he accepted. So on Saturday morning, I drove into town and had my hair styled and my nails manicured. Then I called into the local butchers and supermarket and bought everything I needed for a sumptuous feast. He was due at seven, so I made my preparations at four in order to have time for a lengthy soak before donning my favourite little black number. It was hot in the kitchen, so I nipped outside for a quick break, and as I stood by the adjoining wall, I heard Mark on his mobile. I only caught a snatch of the conversation, but it was enough. And the old biddy next door keeps pestering me, but hey ho, apart from that, it's fine. I'd heard enough. Oh, biddy. Oh, ready, biddy. Okay, I am 42, probably a year or three older than Mark, but I keep fit and I'm always getting complimented. I look younger. What's the point if that's his impression of me? I burst into floods of tears, and once they'd started, they simply wouldn't stop. When the doorbell rang at precisely seven, I hadn't changed. I had mascara all down my cheeks, and I hadn't even started preparing the meal. 
I considered not answering, but the feisty part of me took control. And before I knew it, I'd opened the door ready to give Mark a real piece of my mind. The look on his face was a picture. Blimey, eh? Fizz, what on earth happened to you? What happened? What happened? I heard you. That's what. Every single word. You want an old biddy, do you? Well, am I an old enough biddy for you? The tears flowed again. What? Sorry, I'm not with you. What the hell are you talking about? I heard you earlier this afternoon talking to your mate on the phone, so don't bother denying it. Look, it's not what you think. Can I at least come inside for a minute and explain? I reluctantly moved aside. Go on then, Pinocchio. This is going to be worth hearing. Fliss, I wasn't talking about you. It was Helen. She's been a real pain. Whenever I go outside, she's there waiting for me. It's bordering on stalking. That's one desperate woman. She must be 50 at least. Not the right moment to point out she was actually 46, only four years older than me. Oh, heck, what have I done? I was convinced you meant me. Mark smiled. Don't worry about it. No harm done. Anyway, I'm starving. Let's just have a nice meal and forget all about it. Oh, sorry, I was so upset. I hadn't even started cooking. I could feel a fresh batch of tears welling up. Well, I'll go down to the chippy and we'll share a bottle or two of wine and put the world to right. I managed a weak smile. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, of course. But listen, there's something I have to say. This was it. The big confession. Gay? Steady girlfriend? Not in the market? Go on. I fancied you from the first minute I saw you, but to be honest, I'm just getting over a pretty toxic divorce and you scared me off. What with all the makeup and the class one innuendo. But seeing you soaking wet and needing help and now looking so vulnerable, well, you're beautiful. And I just want to get to know the real you. You honestly don't need all that slap to impress me. It was by far the longest speech I'd heard from him and the best. Wow. You don't care that I'm a year or two older than you then? No, you're probably not anyway. I'm 40 next week. Then it's time to celebrate. Let me wash my face and I'll come to the chippy with you. And one week... Later, dear reader, life is blooming great. And yes, I can confirm that my mark is definitely worth all the effort I put in. I don't think Helen is speaking to us at the moment, though, but I have heard a rumour that a really nice widower is moving in down the road soon. So who knows? 